and to moderate this panel. As you probably know, um, international business, global business, and Canadians' role in it is a big part of uh, what we cover at Canadian Business Magazine. It's an increasingly important part of what we of what we do. Last year we did a rather large special issue on China and opportunities in it, and um, uh, it certainly piqued our curiosity editorially as reporters and editors at the magazine. And let me tell you a little story as, as that speaks to why that is. I was out for dinner uh, with a couple friends uh, a few months ago, and one of my friends runs a, I guess you'd call it an SME, uh, that relies on proprietary software that he needed updated. So he, uh, he sent out an RFP and got a few quotes from um, North American companies to uh, software development companies to, uh, to do this project. And the price came in somewhere at 30, 000, around $30,000 for, for the two quotes that he got. And he thought that was a little expensive, so he Googled China software development, found a company online, sent them the project, and got it done for $700 US. And he said it was pristine, it was perfect. Um, because the company doesn't play around, they don't get creative the way some American companies do. So that's a 30 to 1 price advantage. So people talk about the China price, um, that's a good illustration of it. My other friend at the dinner table was a project manager for uh, one of the largest software services companies in the world, and he was, he was turning pale and said, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to learn how to speak Mandarin. Um, so that's the kind of thing that, that drives all the hype about China uh, in the business press. Um, and also fuels, I think, while it's real, it also fuels some misconceptions and uh, some myths about what business is actually like there. Um, our panel today is going to help us clarify some of the opportunities and realities about um, business in China, particularly looking at uh, Hong Kong's role as a gateway um, to a booming and alluring market. Um, our first speaker today is Mike Rouse, who is Director General of Investment Promotion for the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. Mike came to Hong Kong in, wow, 1972 and has lived there ever since. After spells as an English tutor and a tabloid journalist, he's done pretty well, um, he joined the Independent Commission Against Corruption on its establishment in 1974. Now somebody in the audience told me to say it's never been the same since. After serving in both the operations and corruption prevention departments, he switched to the government proper in 1980 as an administrative officer. His recent postings include being the first commissioner for tourism uh, from May 99 to September 2000, and in July of 2000, he was appointed as the first director general of investment promotion. In that capacity, he established the government's investment promotion agency, Invest Hong Kong. In August 2001, he became the first expat civil service civil servant in Hong Kong's history to naturalize as a Chinese national. He'll be talking today about SIPA and Hong Kong's economic integration with the PRD. Mike? Thank you. The, thanks to the organizers and thanks to Bassanio for giving me this opportunity. I've been on the road uh, this time for about 10 days now, traveling with a colleague at the back, Rowena, and we've been to Amsterdam and Eindhoven in uh, the Netherlands. We were in Cologne and Dusseldorf in Germany. We were in Milan in Italy. We were in Paris in France and we were in London England. That was last week. Uh, we flew in here yesterday and we'll be flying out on the, six, eight, on the 8 a.m. flight tomorrow. But you know, in all of those places, there were two questions. Uh, asked in different languages and asked in different ways, but they all boiled down to the same two questions. Number one, how can my company handle the threat from China? And number two, how can my company benefit from the opportunities from China? And those really are the two key questions for most of the companies in this room. And the companies that will still be here in 10 years' time thriving will be the companies that learned how to manage the threat and learned how to take advantage of the opportunity. So at the strategic level, it really is that simple. But at the micro level, it's not. It's not simple, and it's going to involve a lot of hard work. There's no magic wand here. There's no uh, snake oil that you can drink that's going to cure all your problems and suddenly give you lots of opportunities and enabling you to ward off the threat. But there are three things that can help you. One of them is Hong Kong. The second is SEPA, and the third is my department, Invest Hong Kong. 
I'm not going to talk to you about the advantages of Hong Kong as a base to do business. Howard uh, did his presentation already, and I know that many of you are already aware of Hong Kong's general strengths. But, you know, general strengths are all very well, but they're part of the backdrop, they're part of the environment. What you want is direct practical help. And that's why I'm going to focus on the second two uh, tools that are available to you. SEPA stands for the Closer Economic Partnership Arrangement. The A is for arrangement. It's China's first free trade agreement, and it was signed with another part of China, Hong Kong. And the single most important thing for Canadian companies to realize and to remember is that the benefits of SEPA apply irrespective of the ownership of the company. The benefits of SEPA in terms of tariff-free entry to the mainland market, the benefits of SEPA in terms of privileged access to the mainland market in 26 service sectors now, all of these benefits accrue irrespective of the ownership of the company. A 100% Canadian company in Hong Kong enjoys exactly the same privileges from SEPA as a Hong Kong-owned company or as a mainland-owned company, or as a company from any other part of the world. Let me explain a little bit about what those privileges are. China has, uses 5,000 product codes under the harmonized system. Already products in 1,000 or so of those codes get tariff-free entry to the mainland market. Under terms of SEPA 1 and SEPA 2, which kicked in on the 1st of January 2004 and 2005, respectively. The other thing to notice is that the machinery is there for any other product, any product at all, to move into that zero tariff regime. SEPA was not the end of the process. SEPA was the beginning of the process. And the dis discussions on the SEPA 3 are about to begin. That is to say, there will be more products in the phase 3 of SEPA that enjoy zero tariff. To be eligible for zero tariff, you must be a Hong Kong-made product. How do you become a Hong Kong-made product? Very simply, actually it's not, I have to tell you. Like all trade matters, it is fiendishly complicated. And my colleagues from the TDC, I see one there, uh, they make a living out of this. I'm sure you trade people actually make it more complicated just so you can justify your existence. Is that, is that true? You know, I, I attended a two-hour lecture on trade in goods, and by the end of it, it's a good job we're not armed in Hong Kong, because I was, if I'd had a pistol in my pocket, I either would have shot myself or the lecturer, I can tell you. One or the other, but then I was invited to another two-hour lecture on trade in services, and believe you me, there was no way I was going to go to that one. I'll try and give you a boiled-down simple version, okay? It can either be Hong Kong rules of origin, or it can be mainland rules of origin, or it can be change of tariff code. You can't choose which of those three methods applies to your product. In respect of the thousand products that are already in the system, it's decided for you. And in respect of any other product that you wish to be brought within the system, the two governments will discuss and agree which of the three methods applies to your product. But the important point is, the important points are that the machinery is there to bring other products in. The other 4,000 can all come in now into the zero tariff system upon application. And secondly, that it's irrespective of the ownership of the company. And for most products, it means adding as little as 25% of the value in Hong Kong. So it doesn't matter who owns the company, what matters is where the value is added. That's how you get a Hong Kong certificate of origin. The second part of SEPA involves privileged access to the mainland market in initially 18 service sectors in SEPA 1. SEPA 2 broadened the definition of 11 of those 18 service sectors and added eight new ones. And more service sectors will be added in the phase three of SEPA. 
To be an eligible Hong Kong company, you have to have been in operation for between three and five years in Hong Kong. Substantive operation, not just with a paper company. You can short circuit it by buying a SEPA qualified company. Then the SEPA qualification is suspended for a year and kicks back in automatically at the end of the year. What do I mean by privileged access to the mainland market? Again, I'm going to keep it simple. It's either WTO early, that is the benefits that China promised, the access that China promised to its markets as a condition of WTO entry, Hong Kong companies have immediately. But there's also WTO plus benefits. That is to say, Hong Kong companies enjoy privileges that go beyond China's undertakings as a condition of WTO entry, and they enjoy them irrespective of the ownership of the company. Already, hundreds of foreign companies, literally hundreds, have obtained from the Hong Kong authorities a certificate of service supplier in the Hong Kong market. The Japanese are all over this like a rash. There's at least 150 logistics companies from Japan have already obtained that certificate. And there are many, many more in other sectors as well. Financial services is the obvious one. Standard Chartered Bank has separately incorporated its Hong Kong operation precisely so that it is an eligible, SEPA eligible company and can have privileged access to the mainland market in financial services. The devil, as always in these things, is in the detail. You've got to come and talk to us, you've got to come and talk to our colleagues in the TDC and find out how SEPA can benefit your company. I won't talk about the third area, the trade and investment facilitation that SEPA covers. Suffice it to say that it's machinery, machinery to make it easier for companies on both sides of the border to do business in the other. The machinery is there and it's working. I want to say a few words about our department. Invest Hong Kong is just coming up to its fifth anniversary. We exist for one reason and one reason only, to encourage and assist companies from anywhere in the world to set up in Hong Kong to do business. And all of our services are entirely free of charge. All of them. If your pocket is empty, you can afford us. Okay, the minimum paid up capital of a Hong Kong limited company is one Hong Kong dollar. If you have a Canadian dollar in your pocket, that's enough for five or six Hong Kong companies and we will help you set them up. Okay, we're not talking massive resources. Investment to us means we want your physical presence in our city doing business. And we know that you're not going to come for altruistic reasons. You're not going to come because we have a fabulous sales pitch or beautiful salesman. You're going to come for one reason and one reason only, to make a profit. We understand that that's why, that's the only reason any company should go anywhere outside their home base, is to make a profit. And what we would do together is discuss with you what realistically we think the chances, the prospects are for your company. There's no guarantee of a profit in Hong Kong or anywhere else. But sit down and talk, tell us your business plan, tell us your business model, and then we will tell you, uh, we will give you as much advice as we can and information. We'll start with general information. General information on the operating environment in Hong Kong, the legal system, the tax system. Information that applies to every company in every sector. But we'll then give you sector-specific information. If you're an IT company, you want to know what it's like for IT companies. If you're an insurance company, you want to know what it's like for insurance companies. If you're in biotech, you want to know what it's like for biotech. If you're on logistics and so on. The general stuff is all very well, but you want to know what it's like for companies in your sector. And we can tell you. We can take most of it off the shelf. But then you're going to have questions that are specific to your company, to your business plan, to your business model. And that's where the teams in the Invest Hong Kong head office, where we're structured by economic sector, are enabled to answer you, engage in detailed Q&A spread over weeks or months. That's entirely up to you. It's entirely free of charge. We can give you the information that you need to make a reasoned business decision. 
And if we think you don't belong in Hong Kong, we should tell you that too. We, it's very rare for us to tell a company that everything they want to do in Asia or in China belongs in Hong Kong. Equally rare for us to tell them that nothing they want to do in Asia or China belongs in Hong Kong. The trick is to leverage the advantages of the mainland, the threat part, turn them around into opportunities, leverage off the advantages of Hong Kong, find a structure, find a business model that staples those two together and literally get the best of both worlds. After we've given the information part, there's the practical assistance. You want to come, you need a work visa. That's okay, we know the immigration authorities. You have children who want to go to school. That's okay, we know all the headmasters of all the international schools in Hong Kong, and there's a very good Canadian international school in Hong Kong. You want a good lawyer, a good accountant, you want a good real estate agent, you want an executive search firm that can help you set up quickly and easily. All of these things, we can make the introductions for you. That's what we do every day for companies like yours. The vast majority of our clients are SMEs. The vast majority. The vast majority of them start with a Hong Kong operation of less than 10 people. Hell, the majority of them start with a Hong Kong operation with less than 5 people. We understand that. Your company is not too humble for us. Your company is exactly the right size of company that we help every day. How are we doing? Oh, by the way, when you want uh, those business introductions, if you want to find a joint venture partner, we can help with that too, free of charge. We'll write out to all the companies that we think potentially could be a partner for you, and we'll set you up with appointments with all of those who reply positively. This is direct practical assistance and it's entirely free of charge. And when you launch your Hong Kong operation, we'll help you with the publicity if you want. Some companies coming to Hong Kong don't want any publicity. We had a number of Swiss private banks uh, that we helped. Uh, they're looking after the wealth of certain people from a nearby large economy who didn't want anyone to know they were in town. That's okay. We can keep secrets too. And then we wanted companies that wanted maximum assistance with launch publicity. We can produce government ministers for significant investment. The fallback option is me. Okay? Uh, if, you, if you can't get anything else, uh, I'll be the one who fronts up and cuts the ribbon. Or in extreme cases, like when we opened the California Pizza Kitchen, I will cook the first pizza. Wearing, wearing the chef's hat and the apron. And several people who ate it are still alive. <laughs> This is a full range service and it comes from our department and it's entirely free of charge. The first full year of operation we had, 2001, we helped 99 companies set up in Hong Kong. Second year was 117, third year was 142. Last year we helped 205 foreign companies set up in Hong Kong. That's just about four every single week complete their investment. It's not very good, is it? This year we're doing much better. We're helping about somewhere between four and five new foreign investments be completed in Hong Kong every single week. And we're enjoying it. We're having a lot of fun. A couple of things about the statistics last year. Our fastest growing market is the mainland of China. Mainland companies coming to use Hong Kong as a springboard out to the rest of the world. So after a century and a half of selling Hong Kong as a springboard in, we've now turned our marketing upside down and are selling it as a springboard out. 35 of the companies, 35 of those 205, 17% were from the mainland last year. In the first quarter of this year, with a much higher number, the percentage of mainland companies was up to 20%. So it's not just going. And it's not at the expense of traditional markets. We're still doing well in the US, in Canada, in Europe, in Japan, Korea, Australia, Singapore, the Gulf, India, Israel. Uh, all of these places where we have representatives are growing for us. But the mainland is growing so fast as a source of investment into Hong Kong. And the second feature of those numbers was the significance of SEPA. 45 companies said, SEPA was a major reason they came. 19 said it was the sole reason they came. The other 26 said it was a significant factor in their decision-making process. 
So SEPA is not a myth, it's not a rumor, it's real, and it's causing companies to make real business decisions. I usually time myself, and I haven't done it this time, but that's pretty close to 15 minutes, isn't it? It's pretty close. My time is up. I'm going to go away and sit down now and recover from jet lag and drink lots of water to get over the dehydration. Um, I just want to close with a message. We really, really want you to be rich. And we really, really can help you to do so in Invest Hong Kong. Thank you. Now, that, that's a true full-service investment officer, Mike. That's, uh, are you cooking lunch today? They won't allow me near the kitchen. <laughs> Cooks, cuts, cuts ribbons, maybe does windows. What more could you ask for?